When an audio signal is converted from analog to digital form, two key pieces of information will determine the accuracy of the digital representation of the analog waveform. These are sample rate and bit depth. Before explaining what sample rate is, it's important to know that in the digital domain, time is measured in samples. This means that in a circumstance where the sample rate is set to 44,100 Hz, one second is equal to 44,100 samples. And where the sample rate is 96,000 Hz, then 96,000 samples will represent one second. This is the same for any sample rate as you can imagine. So first, sample rate determines the amount of samples that are recorded per second in a digital system. An individual sample represents a piece of information that is contained at a particular location in the waveform. The sample contains amplitude information, and the sample number represents its location within the audio waveform. I know what you're thinking. What about frequency information? What we need to understand is that frequency is created digitally using multiple samples of varying amplitudes. So if a sine wave were to be recreated digitally, its frequency would be dependent on what the consecutive amplitude values are in that sample sequence. During the signal conversion from analog to digital, the individual consecutive samples are run through an anti-aliasing filter, which somewhat smooths out the step values into a more curved fashion, to allow more of a subtle transition between samples. So now let's move on to bit depth. Bit depth determines the accuracy of the amplitude information. So, for example, if your recording software asks you if you want to record at 16-bit, 24-bit or 32-bit, which do you choose? The simple answer is that it all depends on what quality versus file size you want. At higher bit depths, like 24 and 32-bit, the accuracy of the amplitude is better, but the file sizes will be much larger than, say, a 16-bit recording. The reason that the file size increases significantly is because with a larger bit depth, the domain in which the audio amplitude exists must be larger, because there are more possible values that the amplitudes can hold. These values are stored in the audio file, which is what makes it larger. Now, when an analog signal is recorded digitally, the A to D converter will measure the changes in voltage, which is what is recorded as amplitude, and round off the voltage measurements according to the digital system's bit depth. So, before we go through some of the math concerning bit depth, it's important to note that by increasing bit depth, along with amplitude accuracy, you're also increasing the signal to noise ratio. This is because with a larger bit depth, the difference between the smallest possible amplitude value and the highest possible amplitude value is greater. Cool, so let's look at some of the math. Put simply, the total amount of possible amplitude values in a system can be identified by using 2 to the power of the bit depth. This table shows the amount of values available for different bit depths. A 16-bit mono audio file at 44.1 kHz contains on average about 5.7 MB of data per minute whereas a 24-bit mono audio file at 44.1 kHz contains approximately 8 MB of data per minute. Those are both pulse code modulated uncompressed formats as well. And it may not seem like much looking at those numbers, but with the many takes and multiple track recordings, the data pileup becomes noticeable to say the least. The real file size increase comes with higher sample rates, because the critical data such as amplitude and sample location information is stored in those samples. Now, bit depth is not to be confused with bit rate or data rate, which is the amount of data transferred between an audio file and its playback host per second. Keep in mind though, that naturally bit depth and sample rate do affect bit rate. So now the question becomes, how does the digital system use bit depth to decide what the converted amplitude value should be? The answer is a method called quantizing. To explain a quantized system, or quantizing, I'll use an analogy. Okay, think of a large circle about the size of a dartboard on the wall. This can represent an analog audio system, and just for clarity, let's say the boundaries of the circle represent the system's amplitude limits. In an analog system, you would throw any number of darts at the circle and the result would always be different. This is because, obviously, there's an unlimited amount of possibilities as to where the dart can land inside that circle. 
That part of the analogy represents the infinite possible values of a voltage within an analog audio system. Now, imagine you replace that empty circle with a dartboard. This will represent a digital system in comparison to the analog one. So now, if you get two darts within very close proximity of each other, the system records it as the same value. This is because a system of measurement has been introduced which segments, or in other words quantizes, the results and restricts them to values based on what the bit depth is in use. You can think of quantizing as a kind of rounding off system for analog values recorded inside a digital domain, where the rounding off will be compliant with the previously shown table of possible values for bit depths. So to conclude, let's bind what we know about sample rate and bit depth using a chronological chain of audio related events. First, the bit depth and sample rate is set for recording. Then the audio is converted from analog to digital, where the samples are processed and laid out in a sequence as a recording of amplitude values and sample numbers. The amount of possible amplitude values is determined by the bit depth and technically, the amount of possible sample numbers is determined by the sample rate. So we know that increasing either bit depth or sample rate, both together or individually, increases the file size, but allows for a more accurately recorded waveform. So, that's that really. Cheers guys.